This is a quick overview of the bones of the skeleton. So starting at the top, we have the bones of the skull. So the entire skull we call the cranium. And the bones that make up the skull, we have the frontal bone here in the front. That's the bone of the forehead. And there's a nice picture here in your textbook of the skull that we can see things a little more clearly. So the bone of the forehead we call the frontal bone. And then the bone, there's a pair on either side of the head where most of the top of the head, of the head is formed by the, this is the parietal bone. So there's a pair of parietal bones. And then here where the ear canal is, this is called the external auditory canal. This bone here where we uh, can feel the, the bone of the cheek come in and meet. We can feel this kind of bar here that comes right in front of your ear and goes forward to meet up with the cheek. This is the temporal bone. So this is on either side. This is the hole for the ear canal. So we have the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, and then at the base of the skull in the back is the occipital bone. So this shown in purple here, all of this is the occipital bone. And there's a pair of special uh, structures on this bone where the, the spine begins. So the first vertebrae of the spine sits here on these two grooves. So this whole thing is called the occipital bone. And there's a large hole where the brain becomes the spinal cord and the spinal cord runs down the vertebrae. So this large hole is where the spinal cord comes up and meets the brain inside the skull. This is called the foramen magnum. Foramen means hole. Magnum means it's very large. So foramen magnum is this large hole in the occipital bone. So if you look here at the front of the face, coming, you know, looking at a straight on view, again, this is the frontal bone, the bone of the forehead. And then we have the nasal bone that forms the bridge of the nose here. So this is the nasal bone. Then we have the maxilla. The maxilla forms the bone where the top teeth come out and also the side of the nasal or the, the nasal bone here. So this is all, here is the maxilla. But the actual cheekbone, the rounded part of the cheek, is another bone called the zygomatic bone. So this is the zygomatic bone forming the round part of the cheek. And then again, the maxilla is the upper part of the mouth where the teeth come out, the top teeth. And then the mandible is the movable part. There's a joint here, if we go back, there's a joint where the mandible meets the temporal bone. This is called the temporal mandibular joint. Some people get a little pain there and get inflammation and their jaw gets stuck or it makes a clicking sound. We call that TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. And that condition we just call TMJ. But sometimes people have to wear a mouth guard at night to make sure that that um, mandible is properly sitting in that little groove of the temporal bone. So this is the mandible, the movable lower part of the, of the jaw we call the mandible. So the, the whole portion here is the mandible, the, shown in purple. Then we have the maxilla, the zygomatic bone forming the cheeks, the nasal bone, and then the bones of the skull that I already mentioned. So when you look at the spine then, moving our way down the skeleton, the spine is uh, a flattened S-shape curvature. So it comes out and then it bends inward in the thoracic region. Um, then the, I'm sorry, if we're looking at the vertebrae, it depends which direction you're looking. So this is the back of the vertebrae and this is the front. So we can see that the, the thoracic vertebrae project outward with that S and the lumbar vertebrae in the lower back curve inward. So we want to maintain that slight curvature in the lower part of our back to have good spinal health. So starting at the top, the first seven vertebrae form the cervical vertebrae. Cervical refers to the neck. So when someone is wearing a cervical collar, that just means they're uh, supporting those cervical vertebrae in the neck. And then we have the thoracic vertebrae. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae. This is where the ribs connect. This is in the chest area of the spine. And then the lower back is the lumbar vertebrae. So there's five lumbar vertebrae. And then there's two special bones at the end of the spine. There's the sacrum here that is kind of a fused bone made up of several smaller bones coming together. We call that the sacrum. That's found right between the two bones of the hip in the back. And then the tailbone, which we call the coccyx. 
so it's pronounced coccyx. So it's a hard C followed by a soft C, so it's coccyx. It's the tailbone. Sometimes if a person falls really hard, like say ice skating or roller skating, they fall hard on their, on their bottom, they can chip or break or bruise the tailbone, and that can be quite painful for a long period of time. So looking at the whole skeleton, we'll go back to this large picture here. So we talked about the, the skull and the spine. Again, this is all part of the axial skeleton. We already talked about the ribs in the lecture video, so I'm not going to go into that structure, into those structures again. Just know that the ribs connect to the sternum by these cartilages here. So the sternum is this central, we call this the breastbone. And when someone has to have, say, open heart surgery, they have to use a saw and cut through that sternum to get into the heart. So it's a pretty painful, you know, surgery and especially right after surgery while that bone is healing because we know that bone is a living tissue and has a lot of nerve endings so it can be quite painful for patients because then they need to wire that sternum shut after the surgery is complete and again that can be quite painful during the healing process. So if we look at the top part of the body then you look at the bones that come off of the rib cage we can and the sternum we can see that the clavicle comes across the front here this is the the collarbone here you can feel that coming off of the sternum on yourself and then that forms the shoulder joint the top of the clavicle meets with the scapula so this is the what we call the shoulder blade there's a pair of those on the back the scapula they're triangular bones the muscles of the back attached to that. So the clavicle and the scapula and then the humerus is the upper arm bone. So together the humerus, the scapula, and the clavicle make up that shoulder joint. So there's three bones there. So this is the humerus, the upper arm bone. And then together there's two bones in the lower arm. There's the radius that lines up with the thumb and the ulna that lines up with the pinky. Those two bones form the lower part of the arm and together the humerus, the radius, and the ulna form the elbow joint. So three bones coming together there to form that elbow joint. And then if we look at the hip region, there's this large coxal bone. This whole bone here is called a coxal bone. There's different parts to it. There's the ilium, which is the large flanged part where when you put your hands on your hips, you're putting your hands on your ilium. And then this bone that comes down here at the bottom, there's a pair there. This is called the ischium. This is the ischium. This is the ischium. This is what you sit on. So the ilium is large. You put your hands on your hips. And the ischium is what we sit on. So that bone that you can feel that you're sitting on or when a child sits on your lap and kind of hurts your leg as they sit with that bony bottom on your leg, that's the ischium you're feeling. And then in the front, the two bones come together and there's a piece of cartilage in between there called the pubic symphysis. But the, the bones on either side of that cartilage that connect in the front, this, these are called the pubis bones. So in the front here it's called the pubis. It's not labeled on this diagram, but they are important bones to understand. They form the coxal bone. So there's three bones that form the coxal bone, which is this kind of butterfly shaped bone. Again, the ilium is the large flanged portion. The ischium are these parts at the bottom that we sit on. And then the pubis is the inside portion that connects in the front with a little bit of cartilage in between called the pubic symphysis. That's the name of the cartilage. So coming off of this coxal bone then is the largest bone in the body. This is the femur. And remember the femur has that neck of, of spongy bone that can weaken with osteoporosis and can break and cause a, a, what we call a hip fracture, but it's actually the neck of the femur that's broken. So the femur is the largest bone of the body. We can see that it supports the whole upper body, so there's a lot of strength in that femur. And if someone breaks their femur, they're typically going to require surgery, pins and, and traction and making sure that that bone is not moving in the early days of healing. The kneecap is called the patella. So the patella kind of rides over the surface between the femur and the bone of the lower leg. This is called the tibia. So the patella is just that kind of heart-shaped um, kneecap. 
and then the tibia is the larger bone in the lower leg and it's on the inside so it's between you know where the two uh, ankles come together in the middle of the that's the tibia bone there that we're feeling on the inside ankle it's just a, a, a bony structure on the lower part of the tibia so the tibia is the larger bone supports most of the it supports all of the femur runs down the leg and that's our shin it has kind of a pointed triangular anterior surface that that we call our shin bone but that's actually the tibia and then the fibula has the L in it it's little and it's lateral it's on the outside of the lower leg so this is the fibula and this is very easily broken when people break of an ankle it's often the tip of the fibula that gets cracked or broken and it's pretty common pretty easy to repair as long as the tibia is intact if someone breaks the tibia and the fibula that's a much more serious injury because you can see that these two bones support the whole upper part of the body so a lot of pressure on these two bones but as long as they're both intact and working well you know it can handle the job but again if we break the fibula that's going to require crutches and some casting maybe even a walking boot if it's a minor break because the tibia carries most of the weight of the of the upper portion of the skeleton there. If we zero in and look a little bit more closely at the hand, I'm going to just zoom in here. The hand and the feet have something in common. The fingers and the toes are called the phalanges. So this portion here, these last three bones, one, two, three, these are the phalanges, the last three bones of the fingers and the last two bones of the thumb, we call the phalanges. Then we have what's called the metacarpals. The metacarpals are the palm, makes up the palm of your hand. And then the carpals connect, two of them connect with the radius and ulna. The carpals form your wrist. So that's the, the part that you can rotate and turn in a circle. So these are the carpals. So carpals, metacarpals, think of them as middle. Metacarpals are in the middle and then the phalanges at the end. Fingers, you know, this is the palm of our hand and this is the wrist. So carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. And it's similar down here in the, in the foot. You can see that we have the metatar, we have the tarsals forming the ankle joint. And then we have them the metatarsals which, which form the, the arch of your foot or the top of your foot that fills up most of your shoes and then we have the phalanges again the last three joints or the last two joints of the big toe these are the toes so the phalanges we call the fingers and the toes but the tarsals and the metatarsals and the carpals and the metacarpals are different in their location a good way to remember that is that we clap with our carpals, so that's the C word, we clap with our carpals and we tap with our tarsals. So that's the toes, tarsals, toes, carpals, clap, or tap. Tap with the toes, clap with the carpals. Kind of an easy way to remember those bones. So that concludes the skeletal system anatomy.